getting feelings about illnesses as such. He started doing energy work and went to Barbara Brennan, and then uh, from there you were called to help people with their sexuality. Yeah, well, I, mean, I was always interested in sex, but I experienced a lot of shaming or people making fun of me when I was a little girl, really little girl, and my, they caught me reading my father's Playboy magazines. I was like four or something, and they said, why are you doing that? And I said, I like the tushies. Yes, your favorite line, since, it, since you were then. Yes, I still like the tushies. Still like the now tushies. I like the boobies, too. So I was always interested in sex, but what came in my direction was a lot of, you know, and so I got the idea that you should hide that. And then um, something happened when I was eight that was inappropriate with an adult, and that really gave them, me the message that it wasn't safe to enjoy my sexuality because someone would steal it and do bad things to you. So what happened between like the age of eight and around the age of 30, my mid-30s, was feeling pretty divorced from my own sexuality. And it was something I did. It was something I was supposed to be good at, but it was really for the other person in the bed. And um, I would use my sexuality as a bargaining chip to get love. Which well, was, a lot of, I think a lot of women fell into yeah, that trap. Yeah, which is pretty much a failure, I would say. And, um, and then I was at healing school, and um, it's a longer story than I want to tell today, but mostly what happened was I was in an unfulfilling marriage and was thinking to myself, are you done yet? And then I realized I didn't want to live the next 50 or 60 years of my life um, with that much of a disconnect from my pleasure. So I went on my own personal journey, and now I do this because what I found was I became so empowered in all areas of my life. I really found myself and my self-love and my, my joy and my passion for my work. And now I want to help other people do that. Well, I, I, that is a pretty common question, how did you get into it? But I'd say right on the heels of that is what makes a sex coach different than a sex therapist or a sexologist or uh, anyone else with a PhD in, mm -hmm. in human sexuality and helping with that from a clinical standpoint. Mm -hmm. Um, and for me, I think the biggest difference would be that we come at it from a point of uh, we've walked that path already. Mm -hmm. You know, we're coming at it as a as a coach. Like in sports, for example, nine times out of ten, your best coaches are ones who have played the game when they were younger and could do the game. You know, football players they were in the on the field. Mm -hmm. They they were on the line and they experienced everything that had mm -hmm. to do with that. So they learned from experience and they learned from being coached by others. Right. So as a sex coach, I think a lot of it comes from, like you said, your own personal journey. So and what's think, yours? Well, my own personal journey. Um, I was a bookworm uh, to, from the get-go. My father had a vast library, of, of which included the Kinsey Studies and um, some other reference books. Um, I was socially inept, so I was that kid that, while I knew all the medical terms, I didn't know the slang very well, so uh, I completely got wrong on the playground, which parts were called what, by slang. I'd get the slang wrong. I knew the medical terms. Mm -hmm. I knew penis and vagina. I knew vulva and foreskin and Van Defron's tube and fallopian tubes. And mm -hmm. But I didn't know dick or pussy and which part went with what. Mm -hmm. um, or the slang terms for so much of the things that we do as we explore sexuality. I come from a big family, so there was a lot of kids, so um, there was a lot of giggling and twittering as, we, as our sexuality was awakening. Um, but like most men of my generation, um, I'm 43 now, and I came of age during the AIDS scare, um, meaning I was, in my, I was in my teens during the 80s when uh, they were terrified. I mean, mm -hmm. even even the beginning, the beginning of the AIDS crisis, we didn't. The general public didn't know how you got it, who had it, why, and what to do once you had it, mm -hmm. and all this other stuff. And being a bookworm, a voracious reader, I was every time something new came out, I was always reading about it. So I was 19 before I lost my virginity, terrified that, you know, sex could be a death sentence if it was mm -hmm. done wrong. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it wasn't so much shame as it was just fear of something that you have a, you have this innate physical desire for, but that is incredibly dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, and AIDS took forefront so much so that most of the other 
we used to call them venereal diseases, now they're STIs and STDs, um, a lot of them took a back seat because HIV and AIDS were in the forefront because it was a death sentence, mm -hmm. whereas you could live with herpes for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. um, although the treatments have gotten much, much better now, it's not, while there's still a social stigma on it, it's not like the end of your sex life. You know, and uh, luckily... Uh, so how'd you break out of that? Um, experience and practice, basically. You have mm -hmm. enough sex with enough people. Uh -huh. um, not that I'm in any way uh, advertising or advocating promiscuity. I'm advertising uh, being comfortable with yourself mm -hmm. uh, and being self-aware of what it is you desire. Uh, so a lot of it was just experiencing. Mm -hmm. Experiencing a lot. And experiencing it um, in a way that was positive. Mm -hmm. you know, too many people, I think, um, don't have positive sexual experiences. I think far too many people have sex because they feel pressured to have sex. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't tell you how many people left high school not a virgin, not because they wanted to have sex with the people they had sex with, but because they didn't want the, the, the peer pressure stigma of being a virgin. Mm -hmm. Being a virgin when I was a kid was considered like there was something wrong with you. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that I wasn't the only one who left high school as a virgin. I'm sure plenty of children were leaving high school having claimed to have had sex who didn't. Right. Or ones who had sex only once but claimed to have more mm -hmm. because they didn't want that stigma of being of, of being a virgin, which is really, really strange to me that we would have this dichotomy in our culture between, you know, this puritanical save yourself for marriage, but then inside the peer group it's, mm -hmm. oh, you're a virgin, what's wrong with you? Doesn't anybody love you? You know, right. you know, that right. bizarre emotion. Well, you've talked feeling. a lot about, and this is a big difference between us, because I was one of the quote-unquote popular kids, and you were kind of, a, you were a wallflower, you were really shy. I was really a wallflower, I was shy, I was socially stigmatized, I grew up in the South, but I wasn't, I wasn't subscribing to the typical Southern Baptist mm -hmm. convention of anything, whether it's church going or political meetings or, or... So building your anything. confidence and your social skills has been a big part of your journey. Huge, yeah. huge. I'd say from ni 19 to 24 was basically me having to do what most people do in their teenage years. Mm -hmm. um, built, figuring out who I was and who I wanted to be and how I was going to get there. Yeah. So I think we come at it from really different sides, but both of us are, had to find who, we, who our authentic selves were who we really were, and then having the courage to show that to other people. And I think that is really why we do what we do. Mm -hmm. Like, we had to find the, our authentic voice, and we really want... I wanted other people around me who felt like that about themselves, so... Which is why when we were working so hard to come up with Pleasure Evolution's motto or catchphrase, mm -hmm. um, we finally ended up with empowerment. Through sexual authenticity, yeah, and there really is, there really is a power to knowing and being yourself, and recognizing it and seeing that it's okay. There's no shame in it. Yeah, so that's a little bit about us. And how are you doing? Like, are you expressing yourself in the most authentic way? Um, who might you be if you separated yourself from some of the shame or conditioning or judgments about yourself that you grew up with? Um, read our blog. Get around people who are willing to embrace all of who you are. That's why we're creating a tribe of folks. That's what we call it, the tribe of pleasure evolutionaries. And uh, I hope that you can surround yourself with those folks too and wherever you live, wherever you're watching this video from, join our online community at Pleasure Evolution on Facebook, uh, check out our blog posts and stick with us because we want you to embrace all of who you are as a sexual being. It's been good for us. I'm Trevor Jones. I'm Rebecca Veneto. And we are Pleasure, Pleasure Evolution. Evolution. And scene.